Chapter 6 My son, if thou be a surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go, humble thyself, and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which, having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard, when thou, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teaches with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. The heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thy heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Good fatherly advice here. Verse 1. My son, if thou art a surety for thy friend, in other words, if you are the guarantor, if you have guaranteed that you will pay if your friend doesn't do what they say they're going to, to, to do. In these times, when this was written, if your friend borrowed money and you stood as a surety for him, if he didn't pay, you could be sold as a slave to get the money to pay him back, to pay back the debtor, the person who, owed, who was owed the money. It says in verse 2, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. If you have stricken hands with a stranger, in other words, if you, if you shook on it, if you made the bargain, if you made the commitment that it was there, then you are stuck. And in the youth, in the pattern of youth, it's very common. Oh yes, my friend will do this. My friend will pay them back. But that did not always happen. And many people were sold into slavery or to be bond servants for 10, 15, or 20 years because somebody didn't pay a debt that they believed their friend would pay. It said, go, in verse 3, Go Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. 
In other words, don't just expect your friend is going to do this. Make sure that this actually gets done. Give not sleep to thine eyes. Don't sleep on this. Don't slumber with it. Don't let it sit and wait until it's too late. Deliver yourself from the surety. Don't even go there. Don't think about it at all. It says, go to the ant. Look at the ant. Thou sluggard. Sluggard meaning lazy person. Consider the ways of the ant and be wise. The ant has no guide, no overseer, no ruler to force the ant to do whatever it needs to be done. But the ant provides her meat in the summer, gathers her food in the harvest, and then it has it. It does the work in the season to when it can do it, and then it has it. It says, O sluggard, verse 9, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, ah, oh, just a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, just a little nap. And that is how poverty will come. That is how poverty will come to you. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward, means foolish or perverse mouth. You can always tell whether a person is wicked or naughty because they'll always, oh, this person did that to me, this person did that to me, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, I'm going to eat worms, sort of stuff. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. And what that means is as soon as somebody starts to catch on to uh, this guy isn't really honest, he leaves. He teaches with his fingers. In other words, he doesn't do anything. He always figuring on doing something. Frowardness, foolishness is in his heart. He devises, he's always got plans. He devises mischief continually. He soweth discord. Wherever he is, he tries to divide people against one another so that he can look good to the one that he wants to manipulate. Then it's verse 16. These six things does the Lord get hate. Yea, seven are an abomination on him. This is a very common Hebrew teaching instrument. Seven in Western civilization is generally considered a lucky number. Not by everybody, but very often. Seven in Hebrew is considered a complete concept. So seven things are a complete concept. And it's an idea of saying, well, six of these things. No, actually, on reconsideration, there's seven of them there. Well, obviously, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren are things that the Lord hates. Why? Because every single one of those things is destructive. Every single one of those. There's nothing good that happens by anybody doing any of those things. Nothing good can come of any of them. When thou goest, well, keep thy, in verse 20, keep thy father's commandment, forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon their heart and tie them around thy neck. In other words, put them, put them where you can see them. Put them where you can feel them. Okay? For the commandment is a lamp. In other words, it shines light on what you need to do. If you follow the commandments, you will know what to do. Reproofs are, of instruction are the way of life. It is commonly understood, you're going to make mistakes, my son, but if, you, if you're doing your best to follow the commandments, you will not make huge mistakes. And so you will have these reproofs there of instruction. Corrections, little, you know, this was a good idea, but if you'd done it this way, it would have been better. Then 24, to keep thee from an evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Follow the commandments. Lost not after her beauty in thy heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. In other words, no matter how attractive she is, no matter how many times she bats her eyelids at you. Okay? And then it says this, For by means of a whorish woman, a man is bought, brought to a piece of bread. In other words, he loses everything he has. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. The adulteress will go for the best that she can find to take advantage of it, suck the lifeblood out of it, 
and the man will be brought to nothing. 